All right, 2004, three response, problem three, calculator allowed. A particle moves along the y axis of the velocity v at time greater than or equal to zero is given by the following function 1 minus tan to the negative 1 e of t. Icky. At time t equals zero, the particle is at y equals negative 1. And then it gives you a note tan to the negative 1 x equals arc tan x. All right. But they also give you an initial condition, right? They told you the position at time zero. All right. They gave you the position. So when you take the antiderivative of this function, this is an FTC problem. I almost guarantee it. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Because you're going to have to take the integral of this. Now, listen, we don't want to do this by hand. We're going to do this in our calculator. I, I don't think we know how to do this by hand yet. Okay? Calculus 2. Find the acceleration of the particle at time 2. This is just a calculator portion, guys. This is just a calculator. If you get out your calculator right now, we can do this. So, you want to find the acceleration. So, you need to take V prime of it 2. And if you, ha you have that on your calculator. All right? So, let's... Pause the video and do it and take a picture. So I use my calculator, I input the function, and it's just negative. And again, we go four decimal places. Boom. You just get a point for the number for letter A. That's it. That is the answer to letter A. All right. Letter B. It is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time equals two. Give a reason for your answer. Now listen, I will tell you the acceleration is negative. You have to know the direction of the velocity at this time. Because if you're in reverse and, you're, and, you're de and your acceleration is negative, your speed is increasing, right? Think about in a car. If you're in reverse and you start pushing the gas pedal, you're decelerating because you're going backwards. So this problem is not just taking the value at V of two. But you do have to do that. So you have to do V of 2 first, right? And you put 2 into this function in your calculator there, Tabitha. So you just get a number. Just plug it in. Now, this is where the calculus comes in. You have a negative velocity and you have a negative acceleration. So you're going backwards and you're accelerating backwards. So what is happening to your speed? Speed is increasing. Speed is increasing. Speed has no direction. Remember, velocity has a direction. Man. Oh, yeah. The speed is going backwards. The acceleration is going backwards further. So the speed is increasing. All right? Now, it's going to need more of a reason than that. The speed is increasing. Why is the speed increasing? Because V of 2 is less than 0 and V prime of 2 is less than zero. You have to have, yep, the number and the, the, you have to have the answer, speed is increasing, and you have to have a reason. Point. All right, let's group these two and go to letters. Let's, let's group these two and go to letter C. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't have a good reason, don't give yourself a point. Just count. Because calculus. No, it would get no point. Find the time t greater than zero when the particle reaches its highest point. All right. Now listen, everybody. It's asking about its position. We want to do this through the derivative, guys. So I think, does everybody agree? If you're going to figure out this, we got to find the critical points. All right? So we're going to have to set from letter C, V of t has to be equal to zero. Where are we going to do that? Not by hand, do we all agree? On our calculator, we're going to use a solver. All right? And if you plug that into your solver. Yeah. Oh, do it on the graph? All right. All right. So I think if you go to the graph, you should have found this time as the possible, as the, the critical value for y. All right? Listen, at this point, and this is why you've got to write everything. Guys, guess what you get? You get two points right now out of three. If you have those two things, you give yourself two points. If you said, yeah, I know to find a maximum position, I had to set the velocity equal to zero, and I found this number on my calculator by TID4. That's not necessarily true. It didn't give two points. 
Oh, you're right. I made an assumption. It's just time equals. You're right. I probably shouldn't have units. It doesn't have units here. You're right. So maybe I shouldn't have units. All right, by time and for those still two points. Now, how do we prove it says just fire? How do you prove that this would be the highest point? If at the maximum, what do we know about the derivative? Positive to negative. So what I want to do is show that for V of T, I want to show that V of T is less than zero right, or more than zero, to the right. V of t is greater than zero. So, I'm gonna, this is, yeah, I'm going to you find v, y, dx, that yeah. Oh, at zero? You can use the second derivative rule. Yep. Oh, yeah. So listen, that's a good way to do it. So, did you, so you decided to take v prime of 0 0.443? Okay, what did you guys get for a value of that? It's negative. This is less than zero. So then you could say thus by second derivative rule. Right? Since V prime of T equals zero, as we call T a value up here, so I can use T. And V prime of T is less than zero. This is a maximum, local max, right? It gave no endpoints on this function. All right, and we're done. So, and, well, I would probably say absolute now that I sit here and think about it for just a second. I would erase this and write absolute max because it asked for its highest point. All right, and that's it. That's justification. That's a good way to do it. They did it through the first derivative rule on the test sheet, guys. You have to show that to the left of 0.443 was positive, to the right of 0.443 is negative. Three points on this problem. This one, this one, reading. Okay? And if you say by calculus, most likely they're going to mark it wrong. <laughs> But Mr. Anderson says so, it doesn't go very far either. I'm not. We might keep your talk. Be so. All right. Last one. Find the position of the particle at time equals two. All right, guys, remember when I started this problem, I said this was a fundamental theorem of calculus problem someplace? This one is a fundamental theorem of calculus. They want, they want you to find the position of the particle at time two. They want y of two. Well, the only way to get to y of two is to start at y of zero, take the integral from. 0 to 2 of v of t dt. And i got to believe this is the point. I'm going to stop and look. Yeah, actually, you're going to laugh. This is a point. If you have that written on your paper somewhere, give yourself a point. Handles the initial condition. If you have this on your paper, give yourself a point. If you plug, now you have to find, and it wants a justification. Now you got to find y of 2, so we got to do the work. The work here is negative 1 plus, guys, you put this in your calculator, and I know Tabitha loves when I say this, and this is negative 0 0.360, what's the fourth decimal point? 9, and I add these together, I get y of 2 equals negative 1.3609, guys, I gave credit for quite negative 1.360 and negative 1.361. So you got it by going four decimal places. All right. Is the particle moving toward the origin or away from the origin at time equals two? Is it moving towards the origin or away from the origin? Now, it's at this position. What is the velocity at time two? We figured that out way back here. We had in letter B that velocity of two was negative 0 0.436. So is it moving towards or away the origin? It's moving away. It's at a negative position and it's moving away negatively. Does that make sense? So it is, it's moving away. First of all, make a statement. Guys, one thing I noticed when I was grading AP, you guys don't say yes or no. It says stuff like, is it increasing or decreasing? 
first thing you say is boom, they answer the question. It's moving away. Why? Because y of 2 is less than 0 and v of 2 is less than 0. Boom. Point for that. All right? Hard problem, guys. Uh, give me another way. Uh, yeah, there might be. Well, if you think like the area at one and then the area at two, if the area at one is smaller, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's like really... Why couldn't between one and two? Why couldn't it move far? Why, why couldn't it move closer than further away in between? Oh. You figured out at two. Why couldn't it move closer from one to one point five than further away from one point five to two? Oh. Yeah, I see your argument. You see where I'm going to argue? I'm going to keep taking what you give me and split this tail. You're going to say 1 and 1.1. I'm going to say, why can't it move towards from 1 to 1.05? Then you're going to say, you know, you, this is this is the way to really prove that it happens. All right, this was a hard problem. Nine points. Keep practicing.